Hello ladies and gents and welcome to Do You Know Battlefield 4 episode 6. In today's episode we're starting off simple. You can turn these lights on and off in the new version of Metro. Not really sure why anyone would want to do that but you can if you want to. Maybe you've taken a vitamin D overdose, I don't know. Also on Metro and Caspian you can set some of the grass outside on fire. It hurts, it makes a lot of smoke and it burns for a long time. Just use explosives or the repair tool and Calcifer himself will be summoned. This is a great way of giving yourself some cover or keeping those pesky campers and recons on the move. There's a casual photo booth here too. Take a picture of yourself, battlefield memories, right there. Have you seen these ominous concrete cylinders hanging from some of the cranes in the second assault levels? They're not just for show and they don't look very safe, do they? If you shoot these, they'll come crashing down to the ground, destroying any innocent bystanders or even vehicles below. You're very unlikely to get a kill with these in an actual match, but it could be an interesting way to wind up your mates if they didn't know about it. Do you know that with the latest BF4 patch, you can move around large objects with a knife? I'm talking of course about boats, makes complete sense right? If you're unfortunate enough to beach your amphibious transport and can't get it back into the water then don't fret young sailor, get your knife out and start shanking in blid. If you shank the boat enough it will be pushed back into the water and you can love again. Go free willy, don't forget me, okay? I won't forget you. This even works with attack boats for some reason. Superhuman strength, I don't know. A helpful tip is to crouch and hit the underside of the boat and you can move it further with each stab. Have fun. Although the multiple s raw trick can no longer be performed, you can still do something similar with a javelin to deal massive amounts of damage to enemy vehicles. If a tank is giving you a hard time and bullying you every day at school, just whip out your javelin and get ready to bring the pain. Lock onto your target, fire the first rocket and reload straight away. Lock on again, but this time make sure that you keep your aim tracked onto the target and both javelins will hit in quick succession. You can deal a massive amount of damage to heavily armoured vehicles this way and more often than not you're going to score a mobility hit or disable. And if they've already taken a couple of hits then you're guaranteed to get the kill. If you're a bully, you're only a coward. Remember this hatch on Zavod 311? I showed you in a previous episode how to open it from below using the metal rails. However, there's been a bit of a ninja patch somewhere along the line, and now all you got to do is shoot it to open it from below. Suppressor is definitely recommended, or the enemies up there are going to see you on the minimap when you fire. Shoot it and voila, it'll pop right open, allowing you to climb up there and dispense some rooftop camping justice. Flashbangs aren't just used for temporarily blinding and disorientating your enemy. You can also use them to blow stuff up. Who knew flashbangs in BF4 could be so deadly, eh? If you throw these bad boys anywhere near C4, slams, mines, whatever, it'll blow them up. This can net you some random kills sometimes. And if you want to have some fun with an enemy vehicle that hasn't noticed you yet, Chuck some C4 on them, get a friend to put some C4 on them, and then toss that blinding light of justice at them. Boom. The kill cam even says that you got killed by a flashbang, and that will leave many players in vehicles scratching their head for days. Guys, remember when I told you about this secret tunnel a few episodes back? Yeah? Good. Well, I forgot to mention that when the tower on Caspian border collapses, it creates a massive fucking fireball in here that will turn you into a cheese toasty. You want to watch out for that one. It does look pretty cool though, right? You gotta admit, it looks pretty cool. The RGO impact grenades in BF4 are very useful, but their name can be a little misleading. They don't always explode on first impact, and you can use this to your advantage. If there's a player on a roof above you you can't see, like here on Flood Zone for example, it's quite hard to land an accurate M67 or mini grenade on them. However, a cheeky little tip with RGO grenades is to throw them at the top point where the roof meets the wall. If you do this correctly, the grenade will bounce up and explode in the air, dealing maximum damage to anyone that is up there. Grenade throws like this are impossible to avoid and will guarantee you a lot of kills on those hard to reach players. I'm sure you'll all know how to use slams by now. Stick them on the ground, stick them on the walls and they'll explode if a vehicle drives past. Easy peasy. However, another way you can make use of them effectively is to place them on empty vehicles at hotspot areas of the map. An area like this on Gulf of Oman where vehicles spawn is a great example. This way if an enemy gets into the vehicle and starts driving off, they're going to explode. Completely unexpected and extremely hard to detect before you jump in. Well, looks like our friend Calcifer is back, but this time we've managed to defeat him. So what's going on here? Why haven't I died yet? Well, it's quite simple really. If you throw down a med kit next to you whilst you're taking damage from fire, the healing rate of the med kit will keep you topped up enough on health to just sit there. 
roasting away. It sounds stupid, but this could save your ass in certain situations. Same applies for being underwater too. If you need to stay underwater for a prolonged period of time and there's a med kit nearby, you can basically become a fish for a bit and just live underwater. And who wouldn't want to be a fish, right? I, I certainly would. Do you know that you can now raise and lower the front of the digger? Yep, extremely useful, that one, Jack. I don't know why you'd want to do this. Maybe you want to roleplay as Simba from The Lion King, I guess. That's something people do. That, that's what I'd do anyway. Like, the more you know, right? The final tip for today will show PC players how to remove the leaning mechanic from the game. Well, why would you want to do that, you ask? Well, sometimes you only want to peek out from a box or a wall just a little bit. But if you're too close to the wall when you ADS, your character will kick out more than you want it to, therefore exposing more of your body. Generally speaking, if you disable leaning, you can peek corners more reliably and expose less of your character model. If you want to join the No Leaners Club, it's pretty simple and you can do it in a few easy steps. Go to your C drive, Users, your username, Documents, Battlefield 4 and Settings. In this folder, you'll find the profsave underscore profile file. Right click on it and open it with WordPad. When it's open, hit Ctrl F and search for Leaning Enabled. It'll highlight the line GST input dot leaning enabled space zero. Change the zero to a one and save the file and that's it. Leaning is now disabled, it's as easy as that. Of course, if you want to enable leaning again and you don't like it, just change the one back to a zero and save the file again. Lovely jubbly. Try it out, see what you think. And that's all for today's episode folks, I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new. I'm off to test drive a new skateboard and some knee pads for the X Games next week. Leave a rating in the comments, subscribe for more Do You Know Battlefield 4 and I'll see you in the next one.